Fisheye, a unique transitions pack designed to bring dynamic lens distortion effects to your video edits. Fisheye isn't just a collection of pre-made transitions, it's a fully customizable transition system. Instead of switching between multiple separate effects, you get one powerful transition packed with tons of editable parameters. This means you can adjust and refine the effect to create entirely new looks that match your style and save them using the built-in preset system. It is compatible with Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Motion. While this tutorial focuses on demonstrating its features and workflow in Final Cut Pro, the overall process is largely the same across other supported software. To apply the transition effect, simply drag it from the transitions window and drop it between the footage clips. You can adjust the duration of the transition by stretching it on the timeline or double-clicking on it for more precise control. To change the transition preset, you can either drag and drop a new one onto the existing transition in the timeline or use the built-in presets browser. Additionally, you can save your own presets, which include all available parameters. Once you save a preset, it will appear at the top of the presets browser window. Now let's take a look at the parameters you can edit. There are four main groups, image animation, camera, distortion, and overlay graphics. The main parameter in the image animation group is animation style. You can choose from seven available options and the rest of the parameters in this group will be displayed accordingly. You can fine tune the animation timing using the range selector, change the animation function also known as easing, and modify a couple of other style parameters. The camera settings consist of three sections, movement, rotation, and zoom. In the movement section, you can adjust camera shake parameters and timing, as well as the camera point of interest. The point of interest serves as an anchor point for zoom and rotation. You can adjust this point both in the inspector and on screen. The rotation section allows you to control rotation animation timing, function, and rotation amplitude. There is also a checkbox to flip the target image 180 degrees. This checkbox is useful if you want to rotate the camera 180 or 540 degrees and keep it inverted. In this case, you should disable the rotate out animation by shrinking the out timing range all the way to the right. Additionally, the camera point of interest should remain at the center of the frame. The zoom section provides controls for timing, function, amplitude, and zoom blur. That's it for the camera settings. The next group of parameters adjust the lens distortion effect. This effect is also animated, so it includes timing and function settings, along with three parameters to customize the look of the distortion. The final group of parameters is for overlay graphics. Currently, there are three presets available. A simple vignette with slight edge distortion that mimics a lens POV. It includes basic settings for timing and appearance. The camera lens preset features an animated hand holding a lens, which also applies a distortion effect when looking through it. This preset offers more customization options, divided into four sections. Adjust the move in and out timing, angle, and the position where the lens stays between the in and out animation. You can also tweak settings for position wriggle. Distortion includes three adjustable parameters to refine the effect. Zoom contains settings for animation timing, amplitude, and wriggle. It also features zoom animation blur and a depth of field blur, which blurs the overlay graphic as it zooms in. Overlay rotation provides basic timing settings, rotation amplitude, and the angle of the overlay graphic. The third preset has the same customization options as the previous one, with the only difference being the graphic itself. That covers all the parameter groups. But before I let you go to experiment with these awesome transitions, I wanna show you a cool trick you can do with them. You can use them not only as transitions, but also as a cool overlay effect to draw the viewer's attention to a specific area of the clip. Press the B key to select the blade tool and cut your clip where needed, then add a transition at that point. Adjust the parameters to your preference. I will reduce the overlay graphic zoom, fine tune the movement settings, set all camera parameters to zero, and change the animation style to one that doesn't cause the frame to move, making the image animation unnoticeable. Then. I will adjust the lens position and distortion settings. And that's it. Now I have a cool effect that I can use to creatively highlight an object in the frame. Thanks for watching. Enjoy editing.